Hello, today I'm going to be sharing the contents in my phone and also how I go about organizing the apps and the files in my phone. It's one of the most highly requested videos in my YouTube comment section. I don't know why, but here I am showing the contents in my phone. I think that organizing your digital space and physical space are both very important because it helps kind of increase your efficiency and productivity if you're able to navigate the spaces and find the files that you need and have a better workflow. I'm currently in my fourth week of quarantine. I have found myself with a lot of time on my hands. Right now, I guess I have spent that time working on things such as sharpening skills that I usually don't have the time for. And one of them is learning these new things online. One of the great websites I've been using is Skillshare. Skillshare is a website that allows you to get access to thousands of videos that will help you sharpen your skills, whether it is on digital media or illustrating, it's all there. And it's produced by creatives such as myself and other professionals that know what they're doing. How to add texture onto Illustrator. I know how to add texture onto Photoshop, but something I struggle with is adding texture onto Illustrator because I was never sure which tool to use. So um, there are some videos about that and I've been learning that online. The first 500 people that click on the link in my description box get access to two months worth of Skillshare and you can get access to hundreds of videos and you can spend that time learning something new all for free in two months. The amount of things that you can learn in two months is unbelievably a lot. So if you want to use that time wisely, click on the link in my description box and let's keep the video going. So when organizing my phone, I consider that my device is something that I use almost every single day. And one thing I do when purchasing a phone is that I make sure that I buy the best phone that I can with the budget that I have. I think that you shouldn't shy away from purchasing a phone because it's something that you use every day if you have the budget to do so. I'm not telling everyone to go buy an iPhone or a Samsung if they don't have the budget for it. Buy the best phone for the budget that you have. So you always want to keep your phone in great shape, which means not clogging it up with tons of files and photos. Um, I've noticed that a lot of people end up not being able to view their videos because they just have like tens of thousands of photos already backed up onto their phone. And sometimes when that happens, it slows down the memory space in your phone. And I've been saying phone a lot because we are talking about phones. The process that I go through is something similar to what I do with anything else that I organize in my physical space, um, but I've just modified the last one. It's identify, understand, and filter. In other videos, I talk about identify, understand, and apply, but in this case, it's identify, understand, and filter. The first thing is identify what you use your phone for. So I have created a list of things that I use my phone for. I'm just gonna list out five and then I'm just gonna list out the rest so that you can read what I use my phone for. The first five, and it's not in any particular order, it's just whatever comes into your mind and sometimes you forget, but sometimes it's just as important. So just list down whatever it is. Top five I use, checking your socials, taking photos, watching videos, finding a location, editing your work via Google. So those are the top five things that I thought about first. After you've identified what you use your phone for, then you move on to understanding. You have to understand what you prioritize. And I take my list and basically rank it in order of importance. And this is what has happened. So I'm going to list down what I have found is important. Number one, I use it for calling. I communicate via, me via messaging and email, listening to music, checking time, organizing your schedule and taking photos. I can't separate my finger. These two work together. Do some of you have issues with that? So you prioritize what you are able to do in these, those apps and what you find the most important. Then number three, you actually start using your phone. So once you have filtered out what is important, then you start organizing it. Now, what I always try doing is I make sure that I put everything into one section. The reason why I do that is because I want to be able to kind of just not sift through and I want to create a very balanced workflow and be able to just find those apps instantly. I always update it by ensuring that I delete 
whatever app I don't use. Another thing I do is I organize it based on importance. So here at the bottom, it's like a highlighted section and I place my communication apps and then also my music and my browsing app all here. Those are the four most important apps for me. On the main frame, I go about checking the apps that I use the most. So you can use your phone and check the settings features to see which apps you use more often and then you can place it on top. And here I have WhatsApp, Messages, Messenger, and Camera. And then I go down and these singular apps are just as important because I wanna be able to click on them right away. So organizing my schedule on Google Calendar, I actually don't use the Apple Calendar, I just use Google Calendar because it's synced up to all my Gmails and that is synced up to all the calendar events I schedule online. Then I have YouTube and Netflix for viewing videos and then ways for sorting out which area doesn't have the most traffic during the day. And then the last two sections, I have placed apps that are similar in function into groups. So here I have social, Google, home, accounts, services, photography, games, and Apple, which is pretty much others. So number one is socials. These are all the apps that I use. Um, I have a Viber group, and then I have Line, WeChat. These three messaging apps, I swear, these are for like family chat. So I have my social apps, I have my Google apps. These are things I use for work. Sheets, Docs, Slides, Drive, and these are my classroom, which is easy to access so that I can check on my phone if ever I need to message any student or if I need to check any document by anyone and it's easy to access. Then I have my home apps. Um, here, these are apps that I use to control things in my home. And then I, the list of services I have for delivering and shopping online, and also my, like, I guess, point systems for point system apps. And then photography group, which is all the photography apps that I use. I use Boomerang, Layout, Facetune, Kira Kira, and Afterlight. My least important groups, which are the games. Usually I play games when I don't have access to Wi-Fi for some reason. And then others. These are apps that I sometimes use, like voice memo. I sometimes use to record um, things on my phone. And yeah. So I basically organize it based on order of importance and then um, make sure that it's easy to navigate. Basically, I organize it based on the apps that I frequent the most. Some things that I like doing is that I like to minimize the number of notifications I get. And usually I do that by kind of making sure that I always read the messages that I get. I make sure that I've already read the notifications. Like I tend to get a lot on my Gmail and I try to make sure that I read through everything as fast as possible so that it doesn't stack up. I'm not the type who likes to leave things unread. The number two is I don't keep the apps I don't use. So if I feel like I don't remember the function of the app or I didn't really like it, then I automatically delete it because I just don't think that it's valuable to keep. And then the third is photos. I always make sure I transfer my photos every single year and I move them into the folders. If you're curious as to how I organize my photos, you can check my other video in the description box below. Place everything in accordance to importance and I make sure that I understand the apps that I use and filter out the apps that I don't use. And that's pretty much how I use my phone and that's what you have seen inside my phone. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will try my best to answer it. But anyways, if you have any suggestions of what other videos you would like to see, please leave it in the comment section down below and I shall see you next time. Bye.